It's another episode of Ladies Digest where issues in the world of women are discussed. And Ladies Digest is proudly brought to you by AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Today we'll be looking at a vital process during antenatal sessions for pregnant women. Remember, you can join the conversation on our social media handles on Facebook and YouTube at the Association of African Universities. I am Joni Kuya Iha. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Fetal surveillance test and fetal distress are what we'll be looking at today. So our first question is, what is fetal surveillance? Fetal surveillance is a broad term that refers to a variety of non-invasive tests that may be carried out during pregnancy in order to evaluate whether or not a baby is thriving in the utero. They are an additional means by which to manage and monitor both the mother and the baby's health and well-being. So why is this process so important? Fetal heart monitoring is a way to check the heart rate of your baby. And the heart rate is a good way to find out if your baby is doing well. And the primary objective of fetal surveillance is to prevent antenatal fetal deaths which still account for greater than one half of perinatal mortality. What are fetal surveillance tests? The types of tests a pregnant woman can receive as part of fetal surveillance will depend on each specific case. And assessments may include ultrasound, non-stress test, which is the NSTS, contraction stress test, which is the CST, and the biophysical profiles, which is the BPP. So who should receive fetal surveillance? Fetal surveillance is typically only necessary in certain cases of high-risk pregnancies. And there is usually no need for such monitoring in a low-risk pregnancy. And women should not feel the need to request this test since fetal surveillance will only be administered if a doctor sees the need for them. However, fetal surveillance may be required at any time during pregnancy if complications should arise in an otherwise normal pregnancy. For instance, a decrease in a baby's movements over a specific period of time may warrant a period of testing. Likewise, fetal surveillance may be curtailed if a baby is responding well. But if the baby does not respond to the monitoring as expected, additional recommendations will be made and measures taken. So when should a pregnant woman start the fetal surveillance? Women at high risk for stillbirth should undergo antipattern fetal surveillance using the non-stress test, the contraction stress test, and the biophysical profile or modified biophysical profile. And the initiation of testing at 32 to 34 weeks of gestation is appropriate for most pregnancies that are at increased risk of stillbirth. So moving on to our next point, which is the fetal distress and their causes. Fetal distress, also called non-reassuring fetal status, is the term medical professionals use to describe when a fetus or an unborn baby is not receiving adequate oxygen during pregnancy or labor. And fetal distress is an indication that the baby may not be doing well in the utero. And when a baby is in distress, they may require immediate intervention such as delivery by C-section, which is a cesarean section, or certain methods of interuterian resuscitation. If fetal distress goes unmanaged, it can lead to more severe injuries. So some common causes of fetal distress include anemia, interuterian growth restriction, which is the IUGR, 
the post-term pregnancy, which is pregnancy at 42 weeks or more, the meconium stained amniotic fluid, and the oligohydramnios, which is the low amniotic fluid. Also, pregnancy-induced hypertension can also cause um, the fetal distress. So what are some of the signs of fetal distress? Fetal distress is diagnosed based on fetal heart rate monitoring. And the fetal heart rate should be monitored throughout pregnancy and taken at every prenatal appointment. Doctors can use internal or external tools to measure the fetal heart rate. And it is most commonly measured via electronic fetal monitor. And the fetal heart rate should be between 110 and 160 beats per minute during the third trimester of pregnancy and labor. So let's look at who is most at risk of developing or suffering from fetal distress. Maternal age over 35 years and particularly over 40 years is an independent risk factor for uterine placenta insufficiency, fetal distress, and stillbirth, and is the highest risk in older women. So finally, let's look at what can be done in cases of this fetal distress. Medical personnel most closely monitor all pregnancies, especially high-risk pregnancies, and continuously assess the health of the mother and the baby. When physicians recognize or are alerted to signs of fetal distress, they can monitor the baby and decide how to proceed in the safest way. And usually, the doctor will do this using the fetal heart rate FHR monitoring. This has been Ladies Digest and I've been your host Joan Ikuya Iha. Remember to join the conversation on our social media handles on Facebook and YouTube at the Association of African Universities and Instagram at Ladies Digest. Till I come your way next time, it's bye.